Excellent! Hey guys, welcome to Paul's Hardware. Today I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing of a couple brand new smartphones, at least brand new to me. Uh, we have the Nexus 6 by Motorola and the Samsung Galaxy S5 Active. Brand new phones for me and for my wife. The Nexus 6 is for me. The uh, Galaxy S5 Active is for my wife. We both just switched over from Sprint to AT&T because we wanted better 4G coverage. So here's the Nexus 6. This was just launched in October, and uh, I was considering some other phones as well. The Samsung Note 4 was one that I gave heavy consideration, but ultimately went with this one because since it's a Nexus phone, it will have vanilla Android, which is something I'd never actually tried out before, although this does have some minor AT&T add-ons, but... Uh, uh, I don't think they'll be too bad. Uh, it's on Android 5.0 Lollipop right now. Uh, this is the Midnight Blue version. It's also available in Cloud White. So first off, uh, the box itself, of course, very nicely decorated. Inside the box, though, we have some documentation uh, that will tell you where things are on the phone, important stuff like where the NFC chip is. Uh, they give you a little metal poker thingy. Um, that's pretty much so you can poke the point on the top of the phone that helps you remove the nano sim card although uh, i believe it comes pre-installed on this one uh it's got safety and warranty information of course uh and then they also give you a micro usb charging and data cable uh, as well as a two amp wall adapter now this phone first and foremost is, is just big it's a uh, 5.96 inch or six inch class uh, AMOLED capacitive touchscreen, 16 million colors. Uh, it actually has a resolution of 1440 by 2560, uh, which gives you a pixel density of 493 ppi. Uh, on the front, it's got Corning Gorilla Glass 3, which I assume is virtually indestructible unless you're Superman and have laser vision or something. Uh, and then for size, again, it's a very big phone, 159.3 millimeters tall, 83 wide, and 10.1 uh, uh, thick, which is pretty pretty thin for a phone that's this big at 6.27 inches tall uh, for those of you who aren't using metric system 3.27 inches wide 0.4 inches thick uh, weighs 184 grams or 6.49 ounces and it is water resistant uh, which I thought was nice because I have gotten my phone wet before but um, as far as the uh, exterior of the phone you have a micro USB 2.0 port that is on the go ready that's on the bottom uh, the 8th inch audio jack is on the top it's a multi port of course uh, you have a power button and a volume rocker on the right side. They're kind of textured differently, so you can more easily tell which one is which. Then you have front-facing speakers. This is my first phone with front-facing speakers, and I'm kind of excited about that. The body of the phone itself is kind of curved on the back, which means it's not going to sit uh, stably if you set it on a surface, but uh, it still looks pretty cool. It's got Motorola and AT&T logos on the back. And uh, I noticed that there, where, the, where the M logo for Motorola is, it's kind of recessed. And I've also noticed that's kind of the center point of the phone. So as I'm holding it, um, my, 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 main, my pointer finger tends to rest there. And it helps keep the phone a little bit more balanced, which I thought was a nice little touch. Uh, since it is such a big phone, uh, I've found so far, since I have such large hands, uh, it's been okay for me. But this is definitely not the type of phone if you have small hands. So... Keep that in mind. Uh, it also doesn't have any actual physical buttons on the front of it, which I kind of like having buttons there. This is my first time using a phone that doesn't have those and just has capacitive buttons, so we'll see how that goes too. Internally, it's got uh, 32 or 64 gigs of storage. This is the 32 gig version. Three gigs of RAM, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 805 chipset, a quad core 2.7 gigahertz crate 450 CPU, and an Adreno 420 GPU. Apart from that, for features, you have 802.11 AC Wi Fi, Bluetooth 4.1, NFC, hotspot capability. Uh, the battery is non removable, but it's 3,220 milliamp hours, and I've heard it gives pretty decent uh, battery life, if not the best, since it is a large phone with a large screen. Camera is 13 megapixel, 4128 by 3,096 pixels. Features autofocus, auto optical image stabilization, dual, dual LED ring flash, which is kind of cool. Uh, and it actually records in 4K 2180p video at 30 frames per second. And you got a 2 megapixel selfie camera front facing as well. Uh, the phone also supports wireless charging, although I don't have a dock for it. So I'll see if I can buy one that's compatible. Uh, and here's a look real quick side by side with my old phone, my LG Optimus G, which is a little over two years old now. Uh, and one cool thing I found out actually was that uh, it automatically accidentally started it. And it immediately said, hey, go ahead and use NFC with your old phone and copy stuff from your old Android phone. And it works, like, automatically. And I thought that was really cool. Moving on to the Samsung Galaxy S5 Active. This one's uh, been around for a little bit longer. It was launched in May 2014. This is basically the same internally as the regular, regular Galaxy S5. Uh, but it's got a rebuilt housing for sturdiness and waterproofing and military specification standards. Uh, since it is a Samsung phone, they have a Samsungified 
Android experience, uh, which is not one that I have extensive experience with, but since this is for my wife, uh, she had a Galaxy S4 or an S3. I think she had the S3 actually. Um, so she has some experience with it. It has a TouchWiz UI. So I'll have to give that a go and see how irritating it actually is. Right now it's running 4.4.2 KitKat. Uh, and this is available in titanium gray, ruby red, and of course camo green, which is what my wife chose because she tends to like phones that are, as she describes it, obnoxiously colored or loud or or just odd. Anyway, in the box, uh, we've got a quick start guide. Uh, it's got pretty colors and it will explain what is what on the phone and where things are. Uh, you've got a micro SIM card, of course, since this is a new AT&T phone, it needs a new AT&T SIM. Health safety and warranty guide. Uh, it's got some add-on cables and whatnot that are white. They don't really match. I think they're just sort of carryovers from the uh, Galaxy S5 standard, but a micro USB for charging and data, two amp wall adapter, uh, ear canal earbuds with swappable tips. So I'm not expecting the the, the built or the included earbuds to be fantastic quality, but they are the ear canal kind with swappable tips. So they should reduce outside noise. Uh, it's got a removable lithium-ion 2800 milliamp hour battery. And I do like that this phone has a replaceable battery. Physically, this phone is bigger than my Optimus G by a decent amount, but it's still much smaller than the Nexus 6. It's got a much more rugged feeling as well than a typical sleek smartphone, thanks to the beefed up housing. Um, it's got a 5.1 inch AMO LED screen, 16 million colors, 1920 by 1080 resolution for 432 pixels per inch density. It's also got Gorilla Glass 3 for screen protection. Uh, dimensions are 145.3 millimeters tall, 73.4 wide, 8.9 thick. Uh, that's 5.72 inches tall, 2.89 inches wide, 0.35 inches thick. Uh, so a decent size phone for sure, but again, still not quite as big as the Nexus 6 since I'm using that as my basis for comparison for everything from now on. Uh, weight is 170 grams or 6 ounces, and it has IP67 ingress protection, 67 certification for dust and water resistance up to 1 meter and 30 minutes, and military spec 810G certification for salt, dust, humidity, rain, vibration, solar radiation, transport, and thermal shock resistance. On the outside of the phone, you got a micro USB 2.0 port on the bottom that's on the go ready. Uh, it's of course beneath that little cover for waterproofing, so you'll want to keep that closed if you want to maintain your waterproofedness. It's got an 8 inch audio jack on the top. Power button is on the right side. There's a volume rocker on the left side, and uh, right next to that is a blue active button. You can hold this down to activate the camera, or you can tap it to do some Samsung thing. Uh, it's got a speaker on the back, and this back plate will also remove, so you can swap out the battery, or you can access the micro SIM and micro SD card slot. Uh, it's got three actual physical buttons beneath the screen for back, home, and menu, and this was a feature that was a selling point for my wife, since she prefers actual physical buttons to uh, capacitive buttons that are sort of part of the screen. Uh, internally we have 16 gigs of storage, 2 gigs of RAM, micro SD card slot for expansion of course. It's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 chipset and a quad core 2.5 gigahertz Crate 400 CPU, an Adreno 330 GPU, uh, and then features include 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, hotspot capabilities, uh, the camera is 16 megapixel for 3456 by 4608 pixel resolution. It's got autofocus and an LED flash. Uh, it can record video in 4K or 2160p at 30 frames per second. It can also do 1080 HD video at 30 frames per second. Uh, selfie camera is 2 megapixel, but it can also do 1080 uh, video at 30 frames per second, which is kind of cool. And one last thing, right below the actual main camera is a heart rate monitor that's built in, just like the normal S5 had. Now, our plan for these smartphones is to actually use them for the next week or two, and then I'm going to come back and at least do a full review of my Nexus 6. Uh, I'm going to try to get my wife to let me borrow her, her Galaxy S5 Active as well to do reviews on both of them. So uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you can stay tuned for those videos when they're out. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching as always guys, and we'll see you next time.